Coming up on the Q30 Newscast. Katanji Brown Jackson confirmed to the United States Supreme Court. We have reaction from Quinnipiac Law students. Plus, what happened early Sunday morning which sent SBB and Wake the Giant scrambling to find a new host. Plus, an exclusive interview with Don Sawyer about his experiences at Quinnipiac. They're on the quad, we're in the studio. The Q30 Newscast is coming up. Welcome to the Q30 Newscast. I'm your host, John Surratt. I'm Jacob Resnick. It's the last time for both of us on the newscast desk. Super excited for the next 30 minutes. For sure, Jacob. Super excited to be on with you today. But for on Tuesday night, motor vehicle crashed into a hydrant, causing excessive water onto the road, making parts of Whitney Avenue from Mount Carmel to Sherman Avenue closed throughout the day. And Regional Water Authority says the repairs on Whitney would continue into the evening today making the commute for students a little bit longer than usual. However, vehicles are still able to travel from the York Hill campus to the Mount Carmel campus and Sherman Avenue. Now, Jacob, did you go to Wake Giant on Sunday? I did go to Wake the Giant on Saturday, Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jacob, I was planning to go with my friends, but after hearing Salvacano was not able to make it a few hours before, I just couldn't get myself to go. Q30's Joe Monty has more on the sudden Wake the Giant lineup change. The annual Wake the Giant was held last weekend in the People's United Center and those who bought tickets were excited to see Sal Volcano and Practical Joker's star. However, students were informed that Sal Volcano had to cancel his performance last minute due to sickness. Yeah, I've been a fan of Impractical Jokers for a long time. Um, Sal's obviously one of the best, um, and uh, I was really looking forward to seeing him in person. Um, it was nice of him to even think of coming to our humble little college to you know, perform. I didn't, so I didn't really know who Sal was before, um, but all my friends did, so I was excited just to have it again. For those who attended the show, many had mixed feelings about Sal's replacements, Sarah Sherman and James Austin Johnson from Saturday Night Live. I went. You know, I had the ticket. I might as well go. Um, I ended up liking it. Um, it wasn't, people were like, oh, it's the worst thing ever. It, it, you know, because we're comparing it to Sal. Um, I think it was pretty funny. Um, some parts were a little bland, but besides that, I liked it. Sal influenced a lot of students to buy tickets to the event, and his cancellation affected their attendance. Well, I was really only going because my friends liked Sal. Um, so then once he canceled, no one, we didn't really want to go anymore. Reporting for Q30 News, I'm Joe Monty. On Saturday, Quinnipiac Co's largest day of community service, the event that happens every year, the big event. This year, there were around 850 people who took part in the big event. People from Greek Life, SPB, club sports, and other orgs took part in helping over 75 nonprofits throughout Connecticut by doing tasks like helping farms or painting houses. The big event saw a massive turnout, especially after a down year to COVID-19, and did want to thank everyone who helped. April is Sexual Assault Awareness Month, and Quinnipiac's Title IX office is making sure its message doesn't go unheard. Title IX coordinator Dennis Courtney and other members of the Title IX office took to the quad on Tuesday to quiz students on topics related to sexual assault prevention while driving around in a golf cart. Tim Malone hopped in the cart with Nicole Kazmarski to learn more about why her and the rest of the office say awareness is significant. Um, for me personally, my hope is just for people to be aware more of like definitions and just be aware on campus that like things happen and like just to know what to do in these situations and how they can be a bystander that's active and make a difference in the Bobcat community. And Quinnipiac's chapter of the Public Relations Student Society of America took first place in the PRSSA Cystic Fibrosis Awareness Campaign Competition. Public relations students competed against other chapters across the, uh, the country, implementing a campaign to bring awareness to the Hamden and Quinnipiac communities about the disease. Chapter President Lane Healy and the rest of the organization will travel to Dallas in November to accept their prize at the PRSSA National Conference. And so we're going to be recognized at ICON, which is um, a networking event for PRSSA. Um, it's going to be in Dallas next year, and we will get the chance to go. So we're going to be um, recognized there and given a cash prize as well. And everyone was so excited about that. We have a pretty small group um, in Paris to say right now. So everyone contributed a lot to this campaign, and we were all so excited to see it find success. Students pay for 16 credits every semester in their tuition, but don't always use the 16 credits. Quinnipiac has found new ways students can use that credit through a micro-course discussion-based initiative. Q30's Hannah Mursky has more. 
Starting next semester, the university will offer micro courses, one credit courses aimed at increasing diversity, equity, and inclusion education through skills and community experiences. It first started actually with a group of professors, uh, myself, uh, Don Sawyer, um, and Steve McGuinn, and uh, we had had a bunch of students that had been coming to us uh, expressing interest in, in having courses that, that, that could look at diversity, equity, inclusion. The micro course initiative began with the belief that students should have the opportunity to fill their 16th credit with a course that aids in the advancement and support of DEI education. Uh, the fact that students are paying for 16 credits, it seemed like it would make a whole lot of sense to start to develop a series of one credit courses that would allow students to not only get the most uh, bang for their buck, so to speak, with their tuition, but would be able to continue to, to, to bring DEI, diversity, equity, inclusion, education. Students will engage in discussions meant to build community and showcase different perspectives. Conversation, in many ways, is the most natural way that, that humans learn. If you get students in a room where they have to sit side by side with one another uh, and start to reflect not only on their experiences, but then hear the experiences of other people, um, conversation almost naturally starts to develop. These courses have been tested over the past two semesters and were found successful due to the small group size and interactive conversations. Uh, but is doing is moving towards some training um, uh, to be doing some work in the community. The initiative hopes to increase DEI education on campus by providing students the option to fill their remaining credit. For Q30 News, I'm Hannah Mursky. And Quinnipiac's Vice President for Equity, Inclusion, and Leadership Development, Don Sawyer, sat down with Q30 News yesterday to discuss the changes he has seen over his nearly 10 years at Quinnipiac. Take a listen. I'm joined by Vice President for Equity, Inclusion, and Leadership Development, Don Sawyer. In your time, how has the DCG office grown from when you first started your role? And when did it all begin? Like, when did the idea of, or even the conversation of diversity get put on the table? So, so I think... The diversity was on the table ever since I got here, but I think some people would argue that it was a conversation that wasn't being had all throughout the institution. Again, this is in you know 2012. I came into my current role, if I'm not mistaken, I think I came in in 2018. And so there was a time, th this shows the growth, right? There was a time where if you typed in on our website, diversity, it took you to research on zebrafish. Right? It, it didn't go to any equity and inclusion report that we have now. It didn't go to a DCGE site. And so over the years, we've built up a web presence that's internal face and external face and to kind of show and, and highlight the work that's, that's being done. And so again, I think the difference now is that we're talking about DEI at multiple levels of the institution. How have conversations around gender equality, color, and race evolved at Quinnipiac? So I think they've always happened and so one of the things I talk with students about is like we, we used to call them like roller coaster revolutionaries right that when something nationally happens people wake up and want to be in, invested and interested in diversity equity and inclusion because that's the hot thing to do at that point in time you know there have been people who have been working on gender equity there have been people who have been working on, you know, other issues of DEI, LGBTQ plus, you know, concerns all throughout this time. And at certain periods of time, it gets a heightened attention, right? Specifically, if you look at what happened in summer of 2020 with the murder of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, the racial awakening that they were calling it. This work has been being done, but people start to get interested all of a sudden because it, it was the sexy thing to do at that moment in time. But, you know, those of us who have done this work for a long time, we understand that it'll go up and then the interest is going to go down until the next thing happens. But there are those of us who are committed to this work that we, we work through the peaks and in the valleys. Thank you so much. Um, and thank you to everyone. Uh, for Q30 News, I'm Hepzibah Rogers. Wow, what an insightful and great interview that was with Don Sawyer. Yeah, few people on this campus have a more important role than Don does. Always great to hear from him. And we're going to take a quick break, but on the other side, the latest political news from around the country, including the resignation of the former New York Lieutenant Governor. But first, Lauren Clemens has our weather preview for the next three days. Lauren, it was looking really nice these past few days. What's the next three days looking so far? Thank you, Don and Jacob. Let's take a look at our three-day forecast. Today was beautiful, lots of sunshine with a high of 71 degrees. Tomorrow we will be seeing rainstorms, but it will still be very warm out being 76 degrees. And then Friday, 
there will, it will be partly cloudy, but it will be 67 degrees. But stay tuned for our seven day week forecast after the break. I think it's just vapor with flavor. It won't hurt my kid like cigarettes, right? Vaping is safer than smoking, isn't it? There's really not even that much nicotine in them, right? My kid? My kid, my kid knows it's dangerous. Get your head out of the cloud. Today, nearly 8,000 kids will start vaping. Maybe even yours. Learn about the dangers at talkaboutvaping.org. Meet the scan, a simple procedure whose mission is to detect lung cancer early. I'm here to save you. But I feel fine. That's great, but you may still be at high risk for lung cancer. Oh man, that's a new fence. If you smoke, early detection could save your life. Learn more at SaveByTheScan.org. Thanks for sticking with us. Three Quinnipiac Law students were elected to the Northeast region of the National Black Law Students Association. Q30's Olivia Cattell has more from them on what their election means to them, the university, and in regards to the election of the first black woman, Justice Kentonji Brown Jackson. Last week, Justice Katanji Brown Jackson was confirmed as the first black woman to the Supreme Court. And on a local scale, Quinnipiac Law students Natalie Brown and Fontaine Chambers were elected to the executive board of the National Black Law Students Association's Northeastern Chapter. The organization was created to foster community and provide support for black law students. The legal profession is still not as diverse. We also want to ensure that we create safe spaces for um, black law students to show up and be their authentic selves. Just 5% of attorneys in the U.S. are black, and the organization aims to increase representation in the field. So Nabalsa is just there to give the extra support to give, to help um, people of color go through certain doors to be able to reach their goals and be in the legal fields. Quinnipiac's law community says seeing Justice Jackson's confirmation was a source of inspiration and representation in the judicial system. It can reaffirm uh, Americans' faith in the judicial system. It's hard to have faith in a system that doesn't seem to reflect you, your worldview, or your perspective. The legal field is difficult to enter and one of the least diverse professions. I'm hoping that because of Judge Jackson, uh, more of those role models and gate openers are going to look towards women of color and are going to look towards lawyers of color when they look to give those opportunities. The hope is that these achievements will bring more attention to representation in the field. I'm so happy that I am serving on the Northeast Black Law Students Association because I know I'm paving the way and making it clear for someone else. And that is something that I that I find is invaluable. And I'm so appreciative for the opportunity. For Q30 News, I'm Olivia Cattell. And good news for Connecticut consumers. Governor Ned Lamont's tax-free week went into effect this past Sunday. The holiday lasts through Saturday and temporarily eliminates sales tax on most clothing and shoes under $100. Lamont's bill also puts a pause on gas taxes from the beginning of the month through the end of June and makes all fares on public buses free of charge. Well, Jacob, my wallet has certainly been taking a hit these past few weeks, so this upcoming tax-free week will definitely pay a dividend. All right, John, it's time to talk politics. We're sports guys. Luckily, we have someone in studio to talk politics for us. Yeah, we have Jessica Bridgeraz in the studio here to talk politics. Jess, what's up? Thanks, John and Jacob. I have a lot of politics for you, so let's get right into it. New York Lieutenant Governor Brian Benjamin has resigned following his arrest for federal campaign finance fraud and bribery charges. Benjamin pled not guilty after a brief appearance in federal court after prosecutors discovered an indictment charging him with bribery, fraud, conspiracy, and falsifying records. The indictment accuses Benjamin of conspiring $50,000 in state funds to illegal campaign contributions. He needed to hand over his passport and a bond was set at $250,000. 
the governor's arrest marks the latest chapter of his ongoing issues in campaign financing, and he has released a statement to the public saying that he has done nothing wrong and followed the process. The South Dakota House of Representatives voted to impeach State Attorney General Jason Roundsburg after his conduct surrounding a 2020 crash that killed a pedestrian. The State House concluded that he, that he did commit an impeachable offense, but the House voted 36 to 31 in favor of impeaching him. Roundsburg initially told the police that he hit a deer, however, body was found the next morning after the crash. In late August, Roundsburg pled no contest to two misdemeanors in connection to the incident. He paid a $500 fine for the misdemeanors. Oklahoma Governor Kevin Stitt m made headlines on Tuesday after signing an anti-bill into a law. Having, abor having an abortion in the state will now be illegal with the exception of medical emergencies. The bill that passed the Senate last year and just recently in the House says there will be a minimum fine of $100,000 or 10 years in federal prison if performed. Victims of rape and incest will not be provided exceptions for abortions. However, the law doesn't prohibit the use of prescriptions. Sid said, quote, we want Oklahoma to be the most pro-life state in the country. We want to outlaw abortion in the state of Oklahoma, end quote. Well, that's all I have for you guys. Back to you at the desk. Thanks, Jess. When we come back, we'll talk about what a Yale doctor is doing to help New Haven refugees. Plus, we'll hear more about what's to come with our weather forecast here in Hamden. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Honey, what I think you need is a socket wrench. I played JV basketball. I'm sorry. I don't think it looks right. This I is good, and it's all is good, it, baby. Is it really all good? If you love me enough to routinely test your handyman skills, not to mention the strength of your marriage, then of course you'll visit nhtsa.gov slash the right seat to make sure I'm in the right car seat. I'm going to call my dad. I know what you're thinking. I need a job. I need a new career. Well, I've been there. I've been there. I've been there. I wasn't happy with what I was doing. After high school, I didn't have a plan. I just wanted to start working. I got laid off twice. But you got to keep going. You just need the right skills. Find an apprenticeship. I found a two-year IT program. I found a medical course online. I'm now a consultant in the tech space. You have more options than you think. You can do this. You will find something. You will find something new. Maybe you can make retirement happen. After all, you made home ownership happen. Homeschooling yourself on loans, beefing up your credit score. So I'm pre-approved. You were like, yes! Sorry. Color coding listings, ticking boxes, and flushing every toilet in a 20-mile radius. Home sweet home. You aced house hunting. Now get the tips you need to get on track at aceyourretirement.org. Welcome back, and thanks for sticking around. And, John, hasn't it been such a relief to finally get some spring weather recently? It sure has, Jacob, and it, I hope it continues. Lauren has the full breakdown of what's to come for the next week to see if those temps and good weather stay around. Hey, everyone. So let's take a look at the weather around Connecticut. Temperatures are ranging from the 50s to the 60s. But Torrington is 61 degrees. Hartford 63, Norwich 56, New London 53, New Haven 58, and Danbury 63. We are seeing those warmer temperatures come because of spring, but you will still need that light jacket. Now let's get into the seven day forecast. Wednesday and Thursday will be in the 70s, Friday and Saturday will be in the 60s, and then Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday will be in the lower 50s, and that's when you will need that light jacket. But that's all the weather updates I have for you today. So back to you guys at the desk. On Thursday, Dr. Anisia Anamalai of the Yale School of Medicine will present Health Challenges of Immigrant, Migrant, and Refugees. The presentation is part of the Netter Health Equity Series from the Quinnipiac School of Medicine, Frank H. Netter School of Medicine. Anna Malai is the director of Yale's Refugee Clinic, which helps with medical care for New Haven refugees. Now, John, uh, some sad news recently in my hometown of New York, there was a shooting and bombing on the Brooklyn subway. Uh, I know Krista Barong is standing by in studio to uh, give us some more updates on that situation. Krista, take it away. Thank you, John and Jacob. On Monday, an unknown gunman opened fire at a Brooklyn subway station, leaving 10 people shot and at least 29 being treated for injuries. 
Authorities report that the suspect put on a gas mask before deploying a gas canister and then proceeded to shoot. Many of the people who inhaled smoke and are suffering gunshot wounds are being treated. The suspect, Frank R. James, was arrested today. Police received a tip that he was in a Manhattan fast food restaurant and arrested him in that neighborhood. Police say they do not have a motive for the shooting, but are still investigating. As we have all seen in the past few months, gas prices have skyrocketed here in the United States. According to, a, according to the AAA, the national average per gallon now stands at $4.11. Due to this increase, President Biden announced that ethanol 15 gas will be sold going into the summer, despite it being banned from June to September under the Clean Air Act, as it poses concern for air pollution. One visiting an ethanol plant in Iowa yesterday he stated that this plan is to aid in decreasing gas prices due to the sanctions placed on Russian oil. It is unknown how long this will be in effect, but this seems to be an issue that both parties in the Senate and House of Representatives agree upon. After the passage of the Don't Say Gay Bill in Florida, more states are proposing similar laws. Ohio, Louisiana, and Texas, and other state lawmakers are advocating for the ban of teaching gender and sexuality in schools. Protesters of the original Florida bill claim that it is based upon both transphobic and homophobic grounds. Since January of 2021, over 156 bills have been introduced for the removal of LGBTQ plus representation in schools, specifically 105 targeted at K through 12 schools, 49 at higher education, and 62 to punish those in violation of the law. As a result of this, and other states following Florida's example, protests from students, faculty, and allies have been taking place all over the country in support of LGBTQ plus youth. That is all we have for national news this week. Back to you guys at the desk. Thanks, Krista, for that. And I was talking about my wallet earlier, Jacob, and those gas prices have been affecting it, but I know for yourself, they may not be, you might not really care about those prices so much. Yeah, very, very funny, great joke. Uh, we'll save the jokes for later, but we have one more block coming up. Some sports news coming up next. Uh, Dylan Summer will be in studio right after the break. Multiple studies have shown that marijuana can slow both driver reaction and response time, which can be really dangerous. It's here. It's here. Wait, wait, wait. What? I can't drive. Why? Why? Oh. adopt a shelter pet, we discover they're a unique mix of all kinds of things. Come on, Jules, spot on this last one. Uh, there it is. Keep going with it. Leo! <laughs> they're a little bit of a lot of things, but they're all pure love. Welcome back. Dylan Summer is here as promised with the latest sports news from around campus. Dylan, what do you have for us? Thank you, John Jacob. It's been another exciting week for Quinnipiac Sports. Let's get started right away with the baseball team. We return to their home ground Tuesday in a non-conference matchup against the Hartford Hawks. It was a back and forth affair as both teams battled it out for 11 straight innings. The Bobcats eventually walked the game off after an error from Hartford third baseman Logan Cole. Junior Sean Swenson made the sprint home and gave the Bobcats their seventh victory of the season. Junior Danny Melnick was also a major contributor in runs as he got five out of the nine Quinnipiac runs on the day. With this victory, the Bobcats continue the inch closer to the seventh spot of the MAC. They'll be back in action on Thursday as they welcome the Monmouth Hawks for a three-game series. 
Next, let's switch over to the diamond, the other side of the diamond, where softball competed against the Manhattan Jaspers and the St. Peter's Peacocks. Clint Biak would go on to split both max series, pushing them from last in the conference to seventh. Sophomore Kayla Thomas and junior Serena Fogg each had a strong weekend of performances, where Thomas hit a walk-off sacrifice fly in game one against the Jaspers and tallied five RBIs in between the four-game slate. Meanwhile, Fogg blasted a two-run go-ahead homer against the Peacocks, further increasing her batting average to point two seven three after five hits on the weekend. The softball team looks to build upon their sound week as it faces the Ryder Bronx, who stands as the second best team in the MAC conference on Saturday for more doubleheader action. Let, lastly, let's get, take a look at, men's, at the men's ice hockey accolades from the past week. To start, senior defenseman Zach Metza and first-year goaltender Yanni Peretz were each named as AHCA All-Americans. Metza was selected as the member of the first team East, while Peretz was selected to be on the second team East. Meanwhile, senior captain Wyatt Bongiovanni was named for a 2021-2022 Senior Class Award First Team All-American. The award stands for celebrating loyalty and achievement for staying in school. Bon Giovanni was recognized for his efforts in the community, classroom, and his character and competition. He is the first men's ice hockey player in program history to receive this honor. And that's all for sports. Let's head right back to the desk. All right, thanks, Dylan. All right, one more fun story before we go tonight. John, do you like bees? Well. Jacob, I'll say, I don't like bees, but I like honey. Funny enough, I've actually never been stung before. Me either, actually. Well, Katie Cohen has the story of a local woman who has not only made the busy buzzers a passion, but a business. With spring in full bloom, bees in the local community have woken up from their long winter nap. A local beekeeper, Lauren Doniger, has created a business from her hobby. Lauren has always wanted to raise bees, and six years ago, she found the perfect opportunity. The other responsibilities in my life allowed me to take this up, which is, it is not a, um, it's not a laid-back hobby. <laughs> there's, there's, uh, there's a lot to do. She started off by attending classes put on by the Connecticut Beekeepers Association and got her first set of bees but it did not start out as a business opportunity. And I had lots of honey and decided to, a lot of people asked about buying the honey and I went to the Hamden's Far, Hamden Farmer's Market and uh, was like so warmly received by the Hampton community. With the leftover beeswax, she started making soap to sell with her honey at the local farmer's market during COVID. It, it was lovely in that very difficult summer to go and you know, do something that felt kind of normal and have other people around, but still, you know, feel safe. So that's what made me go the first time to the farmer's market. In the future, she hopes to start a soap making class. Like soap night. So a group of people, probably maybe four, maybe five, would come and I would walk them through making their own two pound bar. They would leave with a two pound bar of soap that they designed and the fragrance that they like and the colors that they like. Quinnipiac University students and local Hamden residents can buy honey or beeswax products at yellowhousehoney.com. For Q30 News, I'm Katie Cohen. Well, Jacob, it's sad to say, but that is going to do us for, for going to do it for us tonight on our last and final newscast. How was it? Yeah, it's been an absolute pleasure to pop in and join the news department every now and then uh, for the last four years. And major thanks are in order to the fantastic news directors at the helm, Brooke Riley. Kay Pattyfoot, and of course, Hannah Bursky. I know you're watching, Hannah. In addition to all of the talented producers who make this show happen every week, I just want to say one of my favorite memories uh, was hosting Newscast my sophomore year with Kaylee Heffler, who was a great producer for this show. It was right before COVID hit, and we were talking about it as, as something that was starting to, uh, to become a bigger part of, of the news cycle, and it's crazy now to see two years later that we were still talking about it, and... Uh, you know, starting to move past it. We don't have the masks on anymore, and uh, we made it out to the other side. Yeah, crazy enough, like last last year too, junior year, first, I was on the first newscast with Maggie Smith, Go like right after, you know, we got back from spring semester. That was a crazy experience as well. I wore this exact same suit. <laughs> you, do, you do quite a bit. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that is going to do it for us here on the Q30 Newscast, and we couldn't have wrapped it up any better, Jacob. Even though we won't be here, be sure to keep up with all of the latest at Q30 News on Twitter and on Q30TV.com. For the producers and everyone behind the scenes, he's Jacob Resnick, and I'm John Surratt. Have a great night.